All right, on to today's show. This is back by popular demand. We have Rachel Prince joining us. She is the rentalpreneur. She's a realtor. She is a coach that teaches homeowners who are buying properties to turn into B&Bs how to do that and how to screen the guests and how to get set up and how to get approved if you're self-employed and all those things. So she's got a podcast called Rentalpreneur. And I'm telling you what, she's dynamic when it comes to the different tips that are available to jazz up your property this holiday season. And one of them just might be a towel monkey. I know, super exciting. Please help me welcome Rachel Prince. I'm Rachel Prince, rentalpreneur and real estate broker. I'm also the creator of Buy BNB, the online real estate Airbnb investing online course and training program that just launched. And I uh, manage a bunch of different properties, about 30 different properties here in Indianapolis. And that has taught me quite a bit. Well, you know, we're approaching the holidays and I'm super excited because you have the inside scoop on how Airbnbs can dress up their place for the holidays. And then as house cleaners, we also want to know, is there anything special that we can do? Yeah, I think that's a big question. And I think it's a too easy for hosts nowadays to just breeze by the holidays and not do anything at all because they've got, especially if you have a lot of different properties to manage, you know, as a property manager myself, it's, it can be overwhelming. You know, you got to buy and decorate all of the gear for each individual house that can, and it may not be in the owner's or host's budget. So that being said, I, I recommend it. Even if you can just do a door reef or some little holiday charm around the house, when there's been special events here in Indianapolis for the Indy 500, the race thing. We'll do checkered flags. We'll give them a little gift basket inside of just some basic swag. I think the guests love basic swag. And if you're going to put some holiday cheer in, I think they'll love that even more, especially since like, let's just say they're staying there for the holiday and they go in late at night and they don't know the city or town. They go to their family's house for the holiday and they come back to their lonely place at night. It's just going to make them that much feel much more at home and relaxed and feel like your place has charm, which is a big factor in getting people to give good reviews and also to get them back and get their referrals. So when you talk about charm, are you talking about putting up a Christmas tree or hanging you some lights or how far do you go with this? Well, I think it's important to stay somewhat neutral. There's all different sorts of people traveling for different reasons during the holiday, not just for Christmas. And, you know, we have all all of the different type Kwanzaa, we have Hanukkah. So I like to stay somewhat neutral. I like to do things, I'd like to do like a fall reef or something on the door or, but for Christmas or the holidays, I might do something that's like, you know, those branches that are like dyed white and crystallized or they've got sparkles on them or, you know, something a little bit more wintry, mm-hmm. winter solstice or something like that. And so I'll put something like that on the door or I might add some, even Christmas lights. I have those all year round in my house. So we have white lights and we have salt rock lamp lights that kind of create moods, soft mood. But I like the idea of maybe adding some neutral white light strand Christmas lights. Maybe you could even get it to go on with a timer. They even have it. So they have an app so you can turn it on and off when your guest arrives. I have mine in my bedroom set on a timer at my BNB so that when they go into their bedroom, it turns off at 11. And I even have a little label that says what time it'll turn it off because I want them to feel like they don't have to manually turn it off. You could even do a little Christmas tree with some ornaments. You know, they have them that light up those little trees, that tree branches. So, you know, you could get creative with it and have fun with it. I don't think people are going to judge you for doing Christmas stuff, but if even if you had a Christmas tree, I might suggest just making it more neutral colors or adding something fun to it. Like if you have a little tree, add, for example, here in Indianapolis, add some Indianapolis ornaments or things that are from Indianapolis to kind of tie it all in and back together. What a great idea. Create some ambiance and then also tie in the local flair. Oh, I love that. That's so great. Absolutely. As a house cleaner or as a host that also cleans your own property, are there any tips or anything that you would recommend for standing out and being memorable during this time of year? 
Yeah. And besides the decorations, what we just mentioned, I think one of the things that cleaners often don't do is get creative with how they fold towels Mm. and or how they leave the towels. But I think it can make a really big impact. I have some cleaners that will make a swan (laughs) and I have some cleaners that will just fold it very fancy. And so I think just simple things with the towels or leaving like a little candy on the towels, something to do with the towels, where the placement is, that's kind of just adds that extra je ne sais quoi about the place when the guest arrives. So I completely agree with that. I know that we went on a cruise and when we opened our door there on the bed, there were some folded towels and they look like swans or a little pig (laughs) or, you know, something like that. Just some fun little animals. I think one night they had a monkey or something, but what happened is every time we walked in, we got really excited. Like, Oh no, what will we have tonight? You know, what kind of ways will our towels be folded? And that sounds like (laughs) so weird, but yet we would take pictures of them and then we would hashtag our cruise or whatever. And if you did something similar with your Airbnb, if you had a hashtag that was for your specific property, Mm -hmm. then when people come in and they stay, of course, that's got to be within sight because you know, they're going to be taking a picture of that and then they're going to hashtag it and they're going to say, Hey, look where I'm staying. That kind of stuff goes viral. I don't know why, but people love the folded towels. I think there has to be videos or something on how to train you how to do it because it's... Oh, there are because that's where my cleaner learned how to do it. But I was going to say that now that super hosts are allowed to change their URL on Airbnb, they can incorporate that, that into it. You know, if it's the honeycomb house or whatever, they can have little bees around and then do a hashtag just for their Airbnb and put that on paper, like you said, so that people can see what the hashtags are and then tag it in their media, but you have to connect the dots for them, make it easy for them and let them understand what those hashtags are. So yeah, just little table cards. Well, now that you mentioned that, I think it's a great idea as you walk in as part of your house rule saying, hey, the hashtag for this property is just to let people know because if they love where they're staying or if they're doing a review, it would be great to have that hashtag in there just so that, or like you said, the custom Mm -hmm. URL, just so that other people can tag into the collective conversation and go, I stayed there too. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I got to stay at this place, you know? No, it is a great idea. Tying into the piece of like of table cards is my is another tip that I might suggest that cleaners do. Cleaners don't often do this or the host, but you can leave a handwritten note. And if it's a nice handwritten note, you can maybe leave it for the next guest. But if it's for the holidays or something special, then if a cleaner took a little bit extra time and just said, we hope you enjoy your stay, you know, Christy, I cleaned your space and I hope it's your satisfaction. Love Chris, you know, or whatever, something cute from the cleaner, as long as it's approved by the host or the property manager. I think those are really fun to do as well. And I think it would go a long way. I'm glad you brought that up. We stayed at an Airbnb and there was a handwritten note. And my first thought was, oh, the house cleaner left this so that I would leave a tip. But what was interesting about the note was this, I've gone to extra work to make your stay absolutely perfect. If there's anything you need, please let me know. And then her name and her phone number. And I Mm -hmm. thought, oh, wait a second. I'm not going to call. I'm not going to call her and interrupt her evening or whatever. And as I looked around, the room was absolutely perfect. When I left, I was like, you know what? She deserves the tip. I mean, this is awesome. And was was there a place to leave a tip? No, no, there wasn't. But I knew she was coming back in to clean the property because she was in charge of the maintenance. Mm -hmm. It was just a note. And I thought, well, look at that. Isn't that amazing? And it was was the extra touch. It was the extra, I've gone to extra care to make this property perfect for you. Yeah. And not expecting anything in return. No, but my first thought was, oh, nice. Because she was looking for a tip and Uh, she was like, but she left her phone number. And I'm like, now what house cleaner on earth leaves their phone number? None. And I wasn't going to call her because I didn't want to interrupt her evening. But yet at the same time, I was like, oh, she just went so far above and beyond. Yes. And I I think that leaving a phone number for me, I would feel uncomfortable if my cleaners did that. So the cleaner definitely needs to check back in with the property manager or the host and see if that's okay. As far as leaving the phone number, I've had my cleaner try to discuss things with the owner that have backfired. I mean, not with the owner, with the guests that have backfired. And that is something that I'm just like, just let us, let us do it. You know what I mean? And it could have been the number of the property manager. It could have been the number of the host. It could have been the host that cleaned the property. I don't know. That's fine. That is fine. But But, I'm just saying from a cleaner perspective. Yeah. I was so impressed. Even an email would work. Yeah. You could even substitute and just let, just let us know. Yeah. 
Yeah, something like that. The guest is going to know. And then not only that, but they're going to relay it back to the manager because you might not have told the manager, but you might have told the cleaner. And then the manager never knows what a great job she's doing. So mm-hmm. I always think it's important to get back to the host or to the manager. But I understand where you're going with that. Other one, spe- speaking of notes, the other one I wanted to say is this is something that they do in some hotels where they have like a little piece of tape. And so it shows where you like break the seal of the toilet and you know that the toilet's been cleaned. Yes. So those little sanitary notes or even like a sticky note, cute sticky note. The cleaner wrote something cute. So using a sense of humor to write in those little sticky notes and say maybe like, I scrubbed extra hard for you. Or you know what I mean? I uh-huh. think that would be fun from a cleaner as well. And so where would you leave that? I'm like on the toilet, you know, right. I put the lid down and stick that sticky note right on there. Uh-huh. You know, okay. I wouldn't do too many, but I might just suggest some cute things, one or two around the places where you know need to be really scrubbed well or something. Something fun and memorable. I love it. <laughs> Let's see here. I think I have another one or two. Leaving a fun fact. Oh, that's so, great. You know, these are debatable whether the host wants to do it or not. But I think as a cleaner, if you're really trying to stand out and or potentially get a raise, or if you work for yourself and you're trying to get more clients or you're or a cleaner who also does managing... Uh, Leaving a fun fact about your city would be cute and educating your guests on something like, did you know this house is 100 years old (laughs) or something? So Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'd be fun to do something like that. I'm in North Carolina and North Carolina was at one point the furniture capital of the world. And so lots of the furniture was created right here in North Carolina. And I know that there are lots of Airbnbs that have original furniture that are antiques. And so they would leave fun facts about, did you know that as this being the furniture capital, this is one of the original pieces of like Thomasville, for example. And then it's almost like a museum piece. And then people like, whoa, you know, I'm not going to eat food or anything on it because it looks so amazing, but it was nice to have that there. And then along with the little placard or the little note, that was the fun fact. Yes. I think that is is exactly right. I think people really do like to learn about history and like to learn about the place they're staying at and things like that. So well, one of the fun things about that is that's another one of those things that you take a picture of and you're like, oh my goodness, this is this chair is 150 years old and you take a picture of it. And that also goes to your social media with your hashtag. Absolutely. The last one I have is in the same lines, along the same lines, it's to leave a coupon or leave something for a local watering hole or, you know, a car wash or something. I don't know, you know, just like a little fun coupon that you might find and, and leave in the house for the guests to use. And uh, one of the things to- that's interesting is there are guys that come around, I guess there are school kids and they sell for band uniforms and stuff. They sell these coupon books that have all kinds of things from the local eateries and the local pizza place and all that kind of that's stuff that's idea. nearby. And it's like 20 bucks or something. And then you get a whole book of coupons. And so those are awesome for Airbnbs because you have a new one every night for the new guest and every guest can only use it once. So right, right. it allows every new guest to use that as a new you know, as a new person. (laughs) I think that's a great idea. And I think, again, if you're a cleaner and you, since, you know, your podcast is for cleaners and also hosts, but cleaners specifically, they need an edge. And they also want to, I think part of this is refocusing the energy of a guest to something fun and creative and charming. And so they don't get hyper-focused on little things, you know, Mm because they may always find a little piece of hair or something, but they're going to be won over by the charm and or something special. Hopefully, I mean, that's the idea. I mean, that's why we leave, you know, always go a little beyond, above and beyond to leave nice things like extra teas and coffees and things like that, because the guests really appreciate it and it makes all the difference. So leaving, that's a great idea with the coupon book. If you're a cleaner by a coupon book and then maybe just tearing one out and putting it there and writing a little hand note and say, I just thought of you, maybe you might like this, even if they don't use it. That's awesome. Now, I know that you also do training for Airbnb hosts. Can you tell us a little bit about your training? Because I know that this is just a tip of the iceberg of the fabulous tips that you have. Yeah. I teach people from A to Z how to buy their property, how to prospect for it, how to even get financing for it. A lot of people tell me they can't even afford or don't know how they would even afford a down payment. But in this course, I'm teaching you all the secrets because I came from absolutely having no money to figure it, going to a couple real estate workshops, becoming a realtor. I mean, yeah, I became a realtor, but I figured out the loopholes in doing so how to buy a house. And now I teach other people how to do that. You know, you don't have to have a real estate license to buy a house now, but I'm saying that I learned everything I could and I worked with a lot of different lenders to figure out 
how people could buy a house, even, you know, let's say they're self-employed, it's really actually kind of hard. So I teach people all my different little systems and loopholes for saving or for getting your down payment, buying that house, or they want to find out where to buy the house. They still need to know where is a good area, if their area is going to be profitable. So we give them a, a deal analyzer tool so they can run the numbers. It also teaches them how to get set up and optimize screen guests, which is so important lately, you know, in the winter, you got to really watch out. So I think that the buy b course really includes and will coach everybody into a successful, becoming a successful Airbnb host. And we are going to leave links in the show notes to that, as well as your podcast and your books and thank all you. the other stuff that you have created that are so dynamic for the BNB industry. So thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Buy bnb.net. And I'm looking forward to doing more of these with you. Thanks, Angela. All righty. And that was Rachel Prince, rentalpreneur, podcaster, author. I tell you what, she's got some fabulous ideas and a course to go along with it. So I'm going to leave links in the show notes to everything that she mentioned. I'm also going to leave links to the book that shows you all the different step-by-step folding instructions on how to make those fancy towels so it will wow your guests this holiday season.